Welcome back to another Hardware News Recap. For this one, we're recapping the rest of the coverage from Computex 2019, stuff that didn't make it into standalone videos, and then also some side discussions we had with various manufacturers and the partners of those manufacturers, including some information on AMD and its 16 core, and then information on overclocking Ryzen 3000 series. A further discussion on the 20 series and G4 Super, and a bunch of cases and other smaller products that were pretty cool from Computex 2019. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. First news item for the show, AMD indirectly confirms the 16 core, but we also have confirmation from basically everyone. Uh, so we've been talking about 16 core the whole week and people are basically wondering where was it at the keynote? It's just, it's not ready yet. But what we can tell you is that we had a conversation with AMD and had a, a pretty, uh, pretty good misspeak at that, during that conversation, which was, you know, this platform started with a four core CPU, and we've now quadrupled it. Four times four is 16. So uh, Half-Life 3 confirmed, I guess. But anyway, that's AMD's indirect confirmation. What we know for, uh, for additional facts, though, is that all of the motherboard manufacturers we've spoken with do have 16 core parts. Like, all of them have told us that. So it's just a matter of when this launches. It won't launch, probably, in the July 7th window. So that's why we haven't heard about it yet. I think there are some birds that are angry we're filming here. Uh, cut to the shot from earlier in the week, I guess, of the birds. That is a lot of birds. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so the July 7th, probably not going to be the 16 core launch, um, but we'll see. It's possible. It's just that more likely this happens end of year. AMD might be holding some chips because it needs them for other things like Epic or they're just simply not ready yet. AMD Ryzen 3000 series and overclocking. We spoke with some uh, extreme overclockers and I've learned that some of them have pushed the Ryzen 3000 series 12 core CPU approaching six gigahertz on LN2. This isn't particularly um, useful information because you're probably not gonna be running on LN2, but it does tell us the upper bound of these early engineering samples and just what people have managed to do in maybe uh, uh, a limited amount of time of playing around with the parts. So we'll see those numbers go up as we did with the most recent Ryzen 2000 series. It's just a matter of time and getting final parts. We've heard some numbers for air overclocking for closed loop liquid cooler overclocking, but at this time we're not gonna share those because uh, it's, it's not close enough to launch and we aren't sure how accurately they'll reflect the final product. So no point in putting them out there right now because it just, it might end up being inaccurate when the product comes out. But close to six gigahertz so far on the Ryzen 3000 series parts is pretty cool information and it'll probably be higher than that as things mature. 20 series and TI refreshes. NVIDIA will be refreshing some of its cards later this year with TI options. The 2070 is one of them to likely be refreshed and the 2060 is on the roster as well. Uh, this is just based on information we picked up at the show. We're not 100% positive on what GeForce Super is at present. It was the teaser that NVIDIA put out and we're not sure if it's related to the TI refreshes, but we do know that there's a memory uh, pre-overclock in the pipes as well for the 20 series. So you may end up seeing some higher frequency memory on uh, on the boards coming out for updates, uh, kind of like we saw with nine gigabit per second versus eight gigabit per second before that. Nothing super exciting though. Oh, that was pretty good. Nothing super exciting. Super lame, as Der Bauer called it. Intel calls it quits with Skylake X and the HEDT line, or at least some of them. Intel sending some of its Skylake X models into the sunset. This is presumably to make room for the Glacier Lake X series of processors that Intel debuted at Computex 2019. The details so far are scant outside of the fact that it's going to exist, and that's official information from Intel uh, coming out in the fall. But what we know is that Glacier Lake is expected to see the Turbo Max span uh, more than two cores this time, and there will be improved memory performance as well. As for Skylake X, the following SKUs are receiving end-of-life status. The 7960X, the 7940X, 7920X, 7900X, 7820X, and the 7800X. The 7980XE is missing from this list, so that one's probably fine for now. Final orders are being taken up until December 27th, and final orders will ship on June 5th, 2020. 
NZXT refreshes. Also at Computex 2019 was NZXT, which unveiled its refreshed H series of cases, as well as debuting a new premium H510 Elite chassis. The H series most notably includes an updated front panel IO, which now brings USB 3.1 Type C Gen 2 ports to the following models the H210, 210i, 510, 510i, 710, 710i. The I models will also get an updated V2 cam powered controller or the smart device as NZXT calls it. We did not like it when it originally came out, but it's supposed to have some updates. There's also integrated mounting trays for SSDs and brackets for vertical GPU mounting. Moving on to the H510 Elite, NZXT's new case uses tempered glass for the front and the side panels, and the front IO panel also includes the new USB 3.1 Type-C Gen 2 connectivity. H510 Elite also ships with two Air RGB fans and one RGB LED strip. There's also an integrated vertical GPU mount and a removable radiator or fan tray. And the H510 Elite has an MSRP of $170 and an estimated July availability. The revised H series will also be available early July with the H210 at $90, 210i at 120, 510 at 110, 710 at $170 and 710i at $200. NZXC also noted to press that these prices reflect the new U.S. tariffs that the U.S. government has put in place, uh, which is apparently impacting pricing by as much as $30 on the H710i. Asus Tor has two new NASs that were present at the event, and they are targeted specifically, or at least were demoing, running games off of them to a host system. The NAS series goes by Nimba Store for the name, and it's made with both two bay and four bay options with two 2.5G uh, or 2.5 gigabit per second RJ45 ports. Asus Tor says the Nimbus Tor 2 runs a dual core J4005 2 gigahertz CPU with the four, Nimbus Tor 4, using a quad core J4105 1.5 gigahertz CPU. They boosted 2.7 gigahertz for dual core and 2.5 for the quad core model. And part of the marketing, again, is that the NASs were at Computex showing a demo of running games from a host system. So in theory, it's a, a low enough access latency to SSDs in the NAS over the uh, higher speed internal network connection that you should be able to do that. But we haven't tested that. It was on demo at the booth, though. Uh, bike ski or however Bikeski? Bike ski. We're going to go with bike ski. Bike ski's booth was filled wall to wall with open loop liquid cooling components. There were a lot of them. We sent a team over to capture shots of the new fittings, tubes, and meters at what turned out to be an overwhelming amount of new hardware. There are blue, red, gold, black, silver, and white fittings of various sizes and angles, including V fittings and T junctions, and hard tubing solutions that are similarly covered. Bikeski is also working on OLED thermometers, which often have questionable accuracy, if we're honest, but they can look good in the right loop. The monitors were adjacent to the pressure gauges with a pressure sensitive probe for real time readback of internal loop pressure. And this could be useful for quickly gauging how loop changes impact water pressure or for determining if the loop has gotten too long. We wouldn't use something like this for the level of accuracy that a review needs. So these are typically not hyper accurate, but they might be okay for quick spot checks. It just depends on the probes they're using uh, or okay for just looks, frankly. And the same body does come with a flow meter as well. New water blocks were also present for CPUs, including Threadripper and HEDT Intel, now including on-block displays for temperature and fittings released this year with prices in the US TBD. Aza is a case manufacturer that you probably don't hear about a lot, but they manufacture a lot of cases semi-custom for other companies that you know about, like CyberPower, for instance. Aza has a pyramid case, name is still uh, in the works, but that's what they're calling it for now. It's supposed to be between $200 and $300, depending on tariffs, apparently, which is quite an increase for a tariff that's not 50%. So I'm not exactly sure where that number is coming from, but that's the range. Aluminum for the paneling uh, with glass. Other than that, it's a bottom to top setup for airflow in Asda's ideal configuration. And then the bottom is spaced a few inches off the ground for uh, better access to air. There are three 120 millimeter bottom intake fans and then one 120 in the top for exhaust sort of uh, towards the top of the pyramid. And the air goes straight up around a motherboard tray, which is mounted centrally. It's supposed to also include a table in September as a separate buy uh, if you wanted to flip the case upside down for some reason. Be Quiet and its budget cases. So Be Quiet's got a Pure Base 500 that was at the show. It's supposed to be about $70. And the fans uh, are their Be Quiet fans as they have been in the past. It's got chamfered edges on the top side of the front panel and then ventilation on the sides of the front that looks to be a bit thicker than what we've seen from Be Quiet in the past. 
but we'll have to get it in the lab and actually measure it to know uh, the final specs on it. September 2019 for the launch of that. And then finally, Cooler Master for the show in our rapid fire news format. Cooler Master has a new power supply that it presently calls Project Fanless. And when we asked, did you come up with that name right now when I asked you, they said no. We came up with it a few days ago. Uh, the power supply will be 650 watt baseline and it's passively cooled without a fan, go figure based on the name, but it can boost up to 1000 watts if the user adds a fan to the PSU chassis. So it's actually got a cage in there, you can pull it out, put a 120 fan in there. And if the fan reaches at least 1500 RPM at the max, then the PCB on the power supply will allow the power supply to boost up to 1000 watts. This is an interesting and unique idea, perhaps with limited usefulness in the real world, but uh, one of the potential use cases might be if you wanted to buy a passive power supply first, 650 watts, good enough for maybe a small form factor build that's supposed to be quiet. And then in the future, upgrade for, or pull the power supply out of that system, put it in another one, if you're using it long-term and run it at a higher wattage for a higher end build. But again, kind of limited use case there. It's it's an interesting idea and uh, something that's worth paying attention to. Cooler Master also has a new lightweight mouse that we didn't talk about during our Cooler Master coverage earlier this week. It's got two models. There's a 710, which should weigh about 52 grams and cost $50. And then there's a 711 model, which uh, has RGB LEDs and weighs about 58 grams and costs $60. The mouse is entirely focused on being lightweight. That's the entirety of the marketing push on it. So if you like the newer trend in lighter weight mice, then uh, this one might be worth paying attention to. It's supposed to have a 3389 sensor without any custom tuning at present from what we understand. So the firmware should be pretty stock on that one. And there's going to be paracord uh, on the final version. The mouse body is made out of ABS plastic. Whether or not you like this will be extremely sub subjective because if you're into ultra lightweight mice, it's probably worth paying attention to. But the downside of something so light that you hold in your hand is that it does begin to potentially feel a bit cheap, just depending on who you are. So that's it for the Computex 2019 end of show recap. We have a lot more stuff coming up, so subscribe for that. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net if you wanna pick up one of our shirts like this one, which is the GPU artifacting shirt. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.